Um, hi, I'm Shayan. Uh, I'm going to talk about our work on uh, fair federated learning by bonding group loss, and this is joint work with uh, Stephen and Virginia from CMU. Uh, so just a little bit background on federated learning. So uh, in federated learning, the data are stored at the client side, say local devices or uh, local silos, rather than collected to be a centralized data set. And then the clients communicate with the server to jointly train a model uh, based on their local data. And after that, the data, uh, after that, the model is deployed for the uh, rest of the world for any downstream, uh, any downstream test. In many real world applications, um, those data from the client side could have different protected attributes such as uh, uh, different genders or different races, et cetera. And these data could be super heterogeneous across different clients. For example, um, some, of the, some of the clients might have most of its data from the blue group, and some of the clients could have most of the data from the red group. In many of these applications, uh, the, we, we want the model to provide fair predictions across all the groups. So um, that's why we're trying to study uh, such group fairness problem in the context of federated learning. Given that we have a centralized data set, uh, a lot of prior works have uh, studied this problem. And uh, in general, there are three different uh, classes of methods. Uh, there are pre-processing methods that aim to uh, rectify or modify the features of the raw data to enhance the model fairness. And there are in-processing methods that uh, try to directly modify the training objective or the method to achieve a fair model. And there are also post-processing method that given a fixed model, we take the model output and modify the prediction score to enhance the model fairness. And in this way, we're focusing on this uh, in-processing method, which uh, try to modify the uh, training objective directly. So the rest of the talk, I'll talk about challenges and motivations of uh, fair federated learning and some limitations of prior works. Uh, I'll talk about our uh, fair FL with uh, bounded group loss and uh, our scalable solver to solve it. And our solver comes with provable convergence and fairness guarantee, which is mostly missing in prior works. And lastly, we show uh, empirical evaluations of our method on um, a lot of data sets on um, multiple different fairness notions. All right, so remember that a, uh, a, a, in, an important assumption in a lot of the prior fair ML work is that we have a centralized data set. Uh, however, in the context of uh, federated learning, data are stored at the local client or the local silo. So the server has no idea what the entire data set looks like. So they are lacking the statistics of the uh, entire data set or the entire true data distribution. A, a naive baseline is to apply those prior fair learning method locally at uh, each silo and we do maybe some aggregation on top of that. Uh, however, that, that could be very inaccurate due to data heterogeneity. So for example, uh, there could be some silos having uh, data only coming from a subgroup of all the all the protected attributes. However, um, that that will definitely not uh, account for the statistics of the data of the entire data set of or the true data distribution accurately. Many prior works also has a, a few limitations and drawbacks. So most of the prior works aim to uh, enforce equal prediction uh, equal prediction quality uh, among different groups. However, these methods could uh, have compromised utility. Uh, as an example, we perform a synthetic linear regression experiment where the data are uh, separated into group one and group two. This dotted line over here um, shows the shows the scenario where the two groups have the same test loss. And despite, as an, exa as, as, as an example, despite we see that those prior methods such as uh, FedFair is able to achieve equal prediction quality for both groups, uh, it has much uh, worse group one, both group one and group two test loss. 
compared to our method, which is this blue line PFFL. Um, and also those prior efforts also uh, usually lack convergence and fairness guarantee. So some basic setup of a uh, group fair FL framework. Uh, the standard federated learning objective aim to find the best model uh, for the average loss over all the clients and uh, all the data for, for each client K. Uh, so we can formalize the fair, federated learning with fairness constraint problem as a constraint optimization by having this constraint set. So we're trying to uh, find the best model subject to some fairness constraint set. Here, uh, this capital RH is some statistics on the data set and on the model. Uh, zeta is prefixed to be some constant. And this capital Z is the number of fairness constraint we want to encode to, uh, to be satisfied by our solver. So to solve the constraint optimization problem, we rely on solving this set of point optimization problem by introducing uh, the dual variable lambda. Here, this uh, beta FW is the uh, federated learning empirical risk, and uh, this uh, small RW is could be viewed as the fairness violation for each constraint. Um, this RW can generalize to a wide family of fairness constraints. So most of the prior works, uh, this RW is chosen to be the difference between losses on two groups and, or uh, the difference between losses on two groups minus some small constant to approximate a setting uh, such as demographic parity, equalized odds, or equal opportunity. However, as we've seen, uh, the previous slide that this code comes with compromise utility. So our method is based on a different class of uh, fairness notion known as bounded group loss and its variance. Uh, so a classifier satisfy bounded group loss at level zeta on the distribution if the expected per group loss for every protected attribute A is smaller than or equal to some prefix con uh, constant zeta. So um, in, instead of enforcing equal prediction quality, we are uh, trying to enforce that the worst group loss should be at least as some prefix constant. And in fact, if we uh, look at this definition, we can see that uh, it also guarantees that any two groups loss should not differentiate by uh, at most zeta. Uh, and, and we also have this empirical BGL constraint formulation, which is when we try to encode this notion, we just simply uh, take the average of uh, all the data coming from uh, this group A over all the clients and subtract it by this prefix content zeta. Uh, we also extend our definition to be a, a, a more specific or, or a more specific uh, uh, definition known as this conditional bounded group loss. Um, so similarly, we, we're trying to pose some uh, constant on some per group, so, per group loss. However, in this scenario, we are not restricting the group to be uh, just the protected attribute, but we take the pair of uh, the protected attribute A and the true label Y uh, as the new notion of the group. Um, instead, of, instead of enforcing a single global zeta over, uh, over all the constraint now, uh, we are setting this zeta y, which is the which is only the same across all the um, all, all the true label, rather than having a, sing, a single global one, due to the prediction difficulty could be different for uh, different true labels. And based on our objective, we uh, we propose a scalable solver. We call it PFFL. We first initialize the dual variable and, um, and, and, and the model parameter. So here this B, capital B is the regularization strength and we will later see in the uh, theoretical uh, analysis on how this B could affect the fairness and convergence. For each iteration, we perform a full T rounds federated averaging on the objective. Uh, and then the server received the, uh, the, do, uh, the, the loss and the model parameter and perform a great one step greater than the send on the dual variable and then broadcast the dual variable back to all the clients and that uh, completes one training iteration. 
and we train it for some fixed number of training iterations. And at the end, we output the average iterate W bar only if the solution is feasible. Uh, some of the, uh, now, now I've discussed uh, some of our um, theoretical guarantees to prove the convergence for this convex concave optimization problem. A, a common tool is, is through this uh, notion of approximate set of point. Uh, intuitively, in short, this, uh, the new approximate set of point characterizes how far our solution is to the uh, true optimum. So the smaller new is, the closer the, the solution is to the true optimum. Oops. Uh, here are some of the assumptions we needed to uh, for for the uh, convergence analysis, and most of the most of them are uh, standard assumptions in the context of uh, federated learning. For example, L smoothness, bounded gradient variance, bounded gradient norm. And we show that under these assumptions, the average iterate is a new approximate set of point for the following new, where the new could be decomposed as a federated averaging error and the exponentiated gradient ascent error. Uh, if we pick this eta theta, which is the gradient ascent step, learning very carefully, this could be, uh, this is approximately order of uh, log t over t plus one over square, square root of t. So if you're training long enough, this could convert just to zero. Uh, we also pr uh, present, uh, we also have a uh, fairness guarantee with respect to our uh, training objective. Um, uh, suppose the loss is upper bounded by some constant M. Uh, we show that for a new approximate set of point, we have the worst group's loss on the actual data set D is uh, upper bounded by this term on the right hand side, M plus two new over B plus zeta. So from this upper bound, we can see there are uh, two ways we can restrict the worst group loss. Uh, we can either make B larger, which is a regular regularization strength, or we can train the uh, train this model for long enough so that this so that this new is small. So it is worth noting that uh, from this bound, we are not uh, we are not seeing the, those kind of fairness utility trade off where if we want to have better utility, we have to sacrifice for the Fairness. In fact, if we train long enough, where we're, we're getting better utility, this new and small, which is all, which also means we have better control on the worst group loss. Uh, we also have the following generalization guarantee um, on for the loss on the true data distribution, and this um, generalization error is different for different fairness notion. And uh, for details of the generalization error, I can refer to our uh, paper. Empirically, we uh, we compare our method on um, uh, uh, a bunch of different data sets, including ACS employment, celeb A, community and crime, uh, compass data set, and, and on um, a lot of uh, a bunch of different fairness notions. Uh, we first compare our method uh, with other fairness aware and non fairness aware baseline. Um, the per group loss and uh, the per group accuracy and the per group accuracy difference. Uh, as highlighted in this red rectangle, we can see that our PFFL uh, provides the strongest worst group accuracy compared to all the prior baselines. And in some scenarios, such as ACS employment and community and crime, if you look at the group one accuracy and group one RMSE, we are also having the best group one uh, performance, which is a strong group performance compared to other baselines. Although some of the methods such as uh, FedFair and FairFair are able to uh, achieve very small accuracy difference uh, between the two groups, for example, the FedFair in the ACS employment case, uh, you can see the group one and group two accuracy is drastically lower than even the ba Fed averaging baseline. and uh, much lower than our PFFL uh, method as well. Um, so that kind of suggests that if you're trying to, those methods trying to uh, enforce equal prediction quality can have compromised uh, utility, uh, can have compromised utility performance. And in fact, if you look at the accuracy difference of PFFL, it also achieves competitive utility difference between other groups compared to uh, these other methods. 
We also test our method on some more popular fairness notions such as demographic parity and uh, equal opportunity here, DP and EO for short. Uh, in this figures, the Y axis is the delta DP or delta EO, which is the parity difference. And the X, X axis is the error rate. So both is, both is for both of them, smaller is better. So we want to see the points to, uh, to, to be at the uh, bottom left corner. Uh, we can see that even though our method is not uh, directly trying to enforce equal prediction quality for, for both groups, uh, we are getting those extra additional benefits uh, for these fairness notions. And uh, in fact, uh, none of the prior methods strictly dominates uh, our, 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 our method in terms of uh, on all three data sets. And, uh, our method can perform on par or even better than those methods. Okay, some of the future works uh, that might be interesting to work on, uh, we want to, in, in this work, we are assuming a concave, con convex concave objective. So it will be interesting to, um, to look at uh, provable uh, convergence and fairness guarantee under non-convex concave objective since uh, the fairness guarantee will be very different under the non-convex loss. And our algorithm is also compatible with both silo level and example level privacy. So it will be interesting to uh, study the formal privacy fairness utility trade-off under example level privacy. And that's it for the talk. Thank you.